<clears throat> Good morning. Thanks for sharing your plan. I've got a view of the bathroom on screen. This is a trial version. I don't I don't own Home Designer Pro. I have Cheap Architect X12, but uh, I thought I would do this uh, tutorial in in Pro. So first thing I'd do is I'd take that window. Whoops! There's a glass wall in the way. <laughs> Go over here to plan view, open this window. Commonly, windows in showers, now you may disagree, but don't have casing. So I'm not going to use interior casing. I'm not going to use a sill. Shower windows, you know, more or less look like that. And furthermore, you know, the default setting for the sash. <clears throat> it's two and a half inches on the bottom and I like mine more equilateral but there's all kinds of changes you can make with just the window dialog next thing is I would center it in the shower now that's just me I'm not chiding you for having it off center but I, I like it on I like it on the center uh, you've got done the right things <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what this uh, double line is on you take made a room here and you remove the uh, moldings. See, there's no moldings. That's good. There's commonly no base mold in <clears throat> a shower unless it's made out of tile. Okay, of course, you need a shower head. That's pretty straightforward. You just go to the library browser and put it here or here. I wouldn't put it over here because that pocket door, that's not going to be workable. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm 73 years old and I have a problem with limbs. I have to loudly clear my throat and I make old, old person noises every now and then. So I, I apologize at the outset, okay? Doing my best here. Okay. Let's open the library browser. Where is that sucker? Oh. Uh, I don't, there it is. <laughs> Found it. Okay, look, doesn't look like you downloaded. Oh, I haven't downloaded. <laughs> Why would I on a trial version? You probably already know this part. I'm just going to go to architectural fixtures and uh, showers. Okay, that's mainly like pans and stuff and shower symbols. I'm going to go to faucets and bathroom faucets, shower fixtures, yeah. So, yeah, depends on what you discuss with your client, but I'm just gonna put this thing in there on the wall that I assume it, it would go. Can't hardly see it, oh, there it is, behind that trial version text. Again, I'm gonna center that. Also, this, this label is kind of big and clunky. I would go to uh, <clears throat> display option, go to rooms. And uh, I use dimensions to say how large ro rooms are and what, how things are relationally. I don't use this interior dimension thing. It's just a setting. It'll turn off that crap. Now I can move this out of the way and you can actually see that you put a light in there. Let's center that light. I like things symmetric. I don't know about you. <laughs> <clears throat> Next thing. We want a door. You mentioned, I think you mentioned a door. Let me take a look at your post. Your post is on my second monitor. I've read through the help materials and tried several things, but can't seem to find the right button. This is something that will end up, I will end up doing quite often. Uh -huh. Me too. And with a little help, I would be appreciated. I need a, a half glass pony wall. Oh, okay. Well, you got that right there. That looks like a half glass pony wall, right? It looks like it. I don't see it in plan view.
Oh, I guess that's what that line is. That's the bottom pony wall thingy. Okay. Never mind. I don't see how you got got it to drop down. Maybe you must have segmented the wall. No, I don't. I don't see a segment. <coughs> In order to get this wall to drop down like that, you had to set, this wall should be segmented, but I don't see a segment. Hmm. Okay. Next thing I would put in is a shower pan. I know you've already got a floor on there, but I, I like to use a shower pan. I'll go over here to uh, shower pans, uh, rectangular, low threshold. Yeah, something like that. Just stick it in there. You'll see it appear. Uh, it's pointing the wrong way. I don't think it's very important in terms of a shower pan, but and it depends on the type of shower pan that you use. If you don't want to have that white thing at the, you can pull that into the wall. I'm using the control key to override that, so you know, it just disappears into the wall. Again, I'm using control and then left click drag because I don't want it sticking out through that side. And then I'm again using control key to have it stick out a little bit past like that. Now, I don't use that white stuff. What I would <clears throat> commonly do is make the shower pan, you can make it the same material. Uh, Let's see, let me find out what that material is. I need to click on this screen. Yeah, there we go, to make that tool active. I just want to know the name of it. Glass, no, that's, it's picking up the glass instead of the tile. Okay. And commonly, I don't use glass standard. I will use, let me open this uh, wall here. I usually, if you see, glass standard is what's by default in all the glass of the windows and so forth. So for a glass wall, I use a different material. I'm gonna go over the materials. And uh, yeah, the glass standard, I'm gonna change that to uh, glass, um, it doesn't matter, just something different, but I'll use glass tempered in this, in this case. And uh, let's see, let me change that to glass. See, I, want, I don't want to, what I'm planning is to make this a little bit different in appearance from all the glass in the windows. So what I'm gonna do is use this tool here <coughs> Excuse me. Use this tool here. Click on uh, glass tempered. I'm going to go to properties. And um, yeah, see the transparency is set at 76. I'm going to make it less transparent so that it shows up in the, in the camera view. It, you can differentiate it. It doesn't look like there's just invisibility there. I want, yeah. See, now you can see that uh, there's glass there. And I kind of overdid it, but I wanted to point out, that's why I did that. The mirror stays the mirror and glass standard stays glass standard. Uh, also, I would click on the wall polyline. If you intend for the glass to go all the way to the ceiling, that's fine. But commonly, you wouldn't have the glass go to the, that would mean this is a steam shower or some special use shower. What I would do, I'm, I wouldn't do this in a uh, isometric camera. I would go back and use a wall elevation camera. Now I can click on this top of the, uh, you may have to make sure that, uh, and then pull that down. I guess temporary dimensions are turned off. Now they're on. I don't see any. But then you can, <clears throat> let me just put a dimension on there. Let me 
because it's measuring below the floor, so that's not very useful. I don't want to move to the bottom of the floor. It's, it's insisting on moving to the below the floor. Okay. Well, all right, you can get around that. I'm just going to draw a CAD line. The other thing is that they, you have grid snaps on. I never use those things. I'm going to turn them off. They're on by default. Now I'm going to, I've got this CAD line here. I'm going to click on the dimension. There, I got it. And move it to the CAD line. It'll usually snap to a CAD line. Now I can move the CAD line precisely where I want it. I'm going to move point to point move and move that from there to there. Okay, now I've got an ac accurate measuring on the top of the polyline. I want it set at, uh, looks like you've got a nine foot ceiling, so we'll set it at, uh, well, I wanted to move the top of it, but it's not picking up the dimension. Well, it's kind of clunky. I was going to set it by the dimension, but uh, by just clicking on it. Okay. See if I can get that precisely. Up. <laughs> it's difficult without the dimension. I wonder why the dimension didn't work. It should. Well, it's just not. <coughs> so I need to raise the top of that. Um, seven sixteenths. So, well, okay. I was going to use transform replicate, but right, it doesn't seem to be an option. I'm just going to have to zoom in and move it incrementally until I get about eight feet. <clears throat> now, in Chief Architect Premier, I can I can put that dimension there and have it actually work. But anyway, that's close enough. I think you get the idea. Now, I'm not going to save that. Now, uh, on the pan, <clears throat> what I commonly do is I'm just going to click on the pan in plan view and go to the materials tab and pour some. I'm going to go to plan materials. I wish I'd done that a moment ago because I, I now don't remember what the name of the material was. And you have to know the name of the material if you're going to pick it out of this this thing. I was hoping maybe I'd look at it and say, oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't see it. Curses. All right. I'm just going to go to a dollhouse and so I can figure out the name, name of that material in a new unit of time. I'll tell you what, <laughs> since I'm in this camera view, I'm just going to eyedropper that to here and you can do whatever you want with the actual pan. But I like the drain showing there and so forth. And whether you have the sides, you know, you, you could make those show by just changing the dimension. The last thing to do would be uh, to get a door in here. <clears throat> Commonly what I do, I think in the library, uh, uh, let's, let's take a look. We'll look in the library browser under architect. Is it architectural? No, obviously. Oh yeah, there's doors and doorways. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, panel. I don't think so. I'm just going to, I'm going to do it my old fashioned way and just put it, get a door in there. Bingo. There's a door. Of course, it looks like the devil. That's just the starting point. I'm going to do a split screen thing again. And I'm going to, I don't need the library browser now. I'm going to hit shift F6 on the keyboard. There we go. <clears throat> now you can watch this develop. So that's the goopy uh, starting point. I'm going to click on the door and open its dialog box. And of course, we'll get rid of the casing. No casing. 
no lentil, no sill. That's goofy. And we'll go back to the general tab and change the thickness from an inch and it's not a wood door. So we're all, we'll make it just three eighths of an inch thick. <clears throat> and we're gonna change the type from this, which is ever what you said is the default. I want to set it to uh, glass slab. See what that looks like. Okay, and that's now it's completely glass, <clears throat> and it's only uh, you know three eighths of an inch thick. Not real crazy about that. Let's see, maybe that's the frame. I don't see a frame tab. <coughs> Excuse me. Shift that to three eighths. Bit jam to wall. Oh no, that, that looked like the devil. Okay. I'll make it one sixteen. I don't want it to be all, all that visible. Yeah, see I made that smaller. Okay. <clears throat> now of course the hardware is goofy. That's a uh, door door type nod. I'm going to make the interior handle none and we'll go to the library for uh, additional hardware choices. I usually use cabinet, a cabinet pull, and it's this one right here for the outside. It looks like it's going on the inside, so that's a CP. I'm going to make this. Uh, I want it on the outside of the door. <coughs> so again, I'm going to go back here and hardware, uh, I'm sorry, cabinet hardware pulls this last one, I think. Yeah, yeah on the outside. Okay, now. Usually the glass is going to be glass standard. You can't freaking see it. You can see the hole in the, in the door. <laughs> <clears throat> There's one more thing I got to do. There's the door or the materials tab and door like those and door glass. I want them all the same. Uh, hardware, I don't want to have glass, but any trims, See, I'm holding the shift key down and left clicking, or excuse me, the control key, and then left clicking on the things I want to group select. It just saves a little time. <clears throat> I'm going to go to plan materials and find glass tempered. That's the one I've altered. I want them to match. See, now you can see the door. Now, I don't want the door open. So I'm going to click on the dialog and change the uh, angle of its open openness. I don't want it at 90 degrees. I want it like something like 15 degrees. So you can easily differentiate differentiate it from from the the wall that's there. Now that's set at nine feet. If you want the door the same height, then you just click on the door and make it the same height as the wall. Yeah, it depends on the construction uh, how you want to make the shower, but you get the idea. <clears throat> and of course, the door being having a dialogue, I can make it as wide or as skinny as as, as needed. And uh, I think if I was doing this structurally, I would want the hinge side right against the wall there, and not you know not hanging on glass. I want it hanging on a structural wall. But you know, this you can vary the width of it depending on what's you know. From talking to your client what what they like and what and so forth okay that's about it now there's more oh you wanted to do uh oh yeah i remember you wanted to do a seat and i wouldn't put a seat here in the door i'd put it over here that's just me 
And there's several ways to do it. You can use a soffit. I would, I don't like to use soffits, but you can use a, a soffit. Now you click it there and it comes in up, or up in the ceiling. And you, now you just resize it to the size of your bench. And then uh, we'll click on it in this camera view and move it down. Or you can, let's, let's do it. Let me show you another way. I'm gonna open the dialog box and you can see floor to bottom, I want that to zero. Here's the other, here's the bench is 18 high. That's about right for a bench. The depth, you know, can be whatever is real to you. And the material. So there, there's a way to do it with a soffit. That's perfectly workable. I just, I don't like to use soffits for a lot of things. I, I prefer a slab. Now, the way you do that, is you just go to two dimensional tools and draw a closed polymine and then take that and convert it. See, there's the convert tool in the edit toolbar to a slab, which gives you another dialogue. And you do the same thing. I want it 18 inches tall. <clears throat> and I don't want it 18 inches below the floor. I want it at the bottom at zero inches. <clears throat> Excuse me. Go over to materials. And we'll go to plan materials. I think that, I, I still don't remember the name of that friggin' tile. It's not important. It comes in with a default material of concrete. And uh, you can't see it because it doesn't show. Let me, let's do a different camera. I'll go over here and we'll use the dollhouse. And then you can see what, what I'm doing. I'm gonna go to shift F6. Okay. See, there's my bench. And then I click on this, hit the tab key and move it into place. I've already set it 18 inches tall. And then the thickness, I mean, it's a tab key. Yeah, the thickness is, that's about, I think it's 12 inches. And then you can just, uh, take your eyedropper. If you're an interior designer, then maybe you'll use something uh, different than just this one tile, I would. Uh, I would put like a different tile type here and on the pan and then from the sides. But again, that's, that's the interior designer stuff and that's not what you're asking me about. And it's not germane, that's just, you have the, know your tools, and know how to use them and, and where, where everything is and then you can get done what you want to get done. I th that's all I wanted to communicate is that uh, the door part is pretty straightforward. You just have to make the door then look like a <clears throat> shower door. I think in my Chief Architect Premier program, I've got a shower door that just came with the library browser. I didn't, I didn't see it in uh, Home Designer Pro. But it, if it's not there, it doesn't matter. You can, just by using the door dialog box, you can get what you want, okay? I hope this video helps you, but if, whether it does or not, or helps others, I want you all to have make it a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm out of here. <laughs>